Hey guys, it's Gwen. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This will never be an easy topic for me. Um, it's something I have typically kept to myself. I put a trigger warning in the beginning of this video, um, but I'm also going to say it here. Trigger warning to any of you that might have an eating disorder, have experienced loved ones with an eating disorder, or can just be triggered by this topic. I don't suggest watching this. I'm going to try my very, very, very best to not get emotional during this video, but it will be really, really hard, um, so forgive me if I do. I was officially diagnosed with an eating disorder about a few weeks ago by a professional that I've been seeing for quite a while. When it comes to this video specifically, I said I wanted to be as real and as vulnerable as I could and if I'm being as real as I can this didn't come as a surprise to me the diagnosis didn't come as a surprise to me I don't want to be super specific on the timeline because there are people involved um, friends family exes that I don't need getting hatred or bullied or anything for knowing this was happening and not saying anything or being treated a certain way by someone I don't want them getting hate so I'm not gonna be too specific on my timeline but I do want to kind of explain the timeline and why I'm not surprised this isn't my first go around with an eating disorder it's not it's also not my only type of eating disorder which is a little surprising to me and I'll get more into that in a little bit when I was a teenager my dad um, got into a four-wheeling accident that very nearly almost took his life. It was around the holidays, um, and if you didn't know, my parents are no longer together. I don't see my dad very often because he lives across the country, um, but during this time, I saw him a little more often than I do now, and he got into an accident that left him with broken bones, um, a brain injury, or like a head injury. He had to get stitches across um, his head because of the accident. And basically, it nearly took his life. Um, very close to the holidays, it affected me a lot. A lot more than people would think. My dad was in the military for most of my life. And if you're not a military brat or a military kid, it's harder to understand but when you when you're a little kid you love your parents the last thing you want is for them to get hurt and my dad was in Afghanistan during a war um, there are several times where he was at very high risk of like getting shot or getting killed or getting um, captured by the other side. So it affected me a lot more than people really understood because my dad already is at high risk for getting killed and then to be in an accident right after he gets out of the military that almost kills him, you know, it's a lot. And around this time, I also started dating someone. Within a few days of being together, I started noticing some red flags and let me just remind y'all, I'm a teenager at this time. Um, I'm not going to say what age specifically because too many people will be able to find out exactly who I'm talking about. But I was a teenager at this time. I didn't have a lot of relationship experience. Um, but I started noticing these flags right away. The controlling behavior, the short temper, blow-ups that somehow ended up being my fault every single time. At the time, I was a less than a hundred pound girl who was a full-time athlete. When the verbal and physical abuse started, I didn't see it coming. Um, I had never been hit by a man in my life until this relationship. And the amount of shock that your brain goes through when someone you are dating or romantically involved in hits you is very it's very complicated slowly this is when I started to develop an eating disorder the verbal abuse part of things 
really affected my self-esteem. It only increased my insecurities, made me shy, made me nervous. I couldn't wear revealing stuff and he called me fat at the same time. Slowly, I started to eat less and less and less and work out more and more. And then I started lying to friends and family about how much I was eating every day. This was the first time my relationship with food was bad. Since that first time, it's been really on and off. It's something I've been really, really ashamed of. It's something I don't like to talk about um, or even admit to. And it, it takes me a long time when it happens again, when I get back into those habits, when I get back into that mindset of, starving myself or overworking out or thinking that I need to lose hundreds of pounds um, when <laughs> I'm not more than a hundred something pounds, you know. The next time it happened was a few years later. I was still a teenager um, and I went through a loss. I lost my grandfather um, and he was one of the most amazing people he was like a best friend to me he was like my twin um, he was a writer and an author and I've always loved writing I've always been I've always excelled at it in school and I had planned to write a book with him so when he passed away it broke my heart it broke me to pieces it I wasn't there anymore. I became a shell. Um, I started wearing really dark makeup. Um, I stopped hanging out with friends. I stopped posting on social media so much and I started starving myself. I, I lost my appetite or I convinced myself that I wasn't hungry. And I got through that. Then the next time it occurred was when I suffered another loss. This time it was different. Typically my eating disorders, my eating habits were just starving myself and overworking. This time was different because I suffered a miscarriage, which is another topic that's extremely painful and hard for me to talk about. One day I will, one day I'll share that, but I'm not ready to share a lot about that. Um, what I will say is that the loss of my child, the loss of a miscarriage, I had already gained weight from being pregnant, having cravings, whatever. And when the loss happened, my mental state went to hell. I was living with Satan in my own brain. I was trapped in my own head. I saw nothing but darkness and I started binging. When I started binging, I could eat an entire box of oatmeal cookies, like Lil Debbie oatmeal cookies. I could eat half a box of milk duds. I could eat an entire box of wafers and have spaghetti and meatballs for dinner all in one night. That was when I was binging. It was when I was at my heaviest. My entire life, I was less than 100 pounds, skinny as hell, an athlete my whole childhood and teenage years. And then during this time, I gained the most weight I've ever gained. I was the heaviest I've ever been. During this time, the relationship that I was in started drowning because my mental health went to hell. I let myself go physically and mentally and it took a toll on my relationship for sure. So as my relationship is drowning, I become desperate to save it. I started walking my dog twice a day, going to the gym twice a day. I cut out like a lot of foods, sugar stuff, chips, fast food. I started looking up healthy recipes on Pinterest and um, making food at home and making homemade meals every day. That's when I realized my ED had come back. I increased my exercise by 50% and lowered my food intake by almost down to almost nothing. Unfortunately, I couldn't save the relationship I was trying to save and the breakup made everything worse for me mentally. Um, 
and I went back to binging and throwing up or binging and then starving myself and before the relationship ended um, I took a fall down some concrete steps and in result of that fall I ended up with a concussion and some stomach issues for weeks and weeks. I was throwing up every single morning, multiple times in the morning. It went on long enough to where they decided to do a scope down my throat to look at my stomach. And they couldn't find a cause, but they put me on some medications for my stomach. Um, and it somewhat got better, but it's still something I struggle with to this day. And it also definitely encouraged and affected the fact that I had an eating disorder because I would still have troubles, like I had trouble today with my stomach. Um, and not because of the eating disorder, but because of the fall I took. Um, that was two years ago. It still affects me to today. But I would binge and be fine again, be able to eat normal, and then I would have stomach problems and be unable to eat that day or unable to eat for two days. And it would only encourage the mindset and the ability to go longer and longer and longer without eating. So while sometimes it's not even my choice not to eat, it encourages me not to eat and that doesn't make it any easier. I decided to tell my eating disorder story because it's something that I feel like I've kept as a deep dark secret that I'm ashamed of and I feel like I can hold myself way more accountable to taking care of myself, eating healthy, and eating right amounts while exercising right amounts. I feel like I can hold myself accountable a lot more when it's public, when, it, when people know because I only have less than a handful of people who know the full details and extent of my eating disorder and who know the things I should and shouldn't be doing. At this point, when I look at food, I get nauseous. When I look at food, I feel like throwing up. Um, even trying to eat small snacks is a struggle on a daily basis for me. It's become pretty severe for me and this time I haven't been able to get out of it so easily. This isn't something I'm proud of, which I think is why I've taken so long to talk about it publicly or at least talk about it this much and in this much detail. The last thing I want to share about it before I end the video is just some tips and some things I have learned from seeing a professional about it and just throughout the years I have learned a few things that have helped even though I am severely struggling I know plenty of girls who are struggling as well who have no tips who don't see professionals yet um, who are not at that point of learning how to manage having an eating disorder you know having an eating disorder is not something you can just magically fix and have never come back for me it's come back three different times in two different forms either starving not eating at all and over exercising or binging and then throwing it up. One of my tips is drinking water. Um, I know it sounds stupid, it really does. I hate water, water's not my thing, but drinking something like water or juice, juice has calories too, water, juice, milk, anything like that, um, for me at least, it settles the nauseous feeling of looking at food and trying to eat something. I will drink water or coke, Sprite, something fizzy to kind of settle my stomach and get me prepared to swallow things. The action of swallowing makes me kind of nauseous, which again is like an eating disorder kind of thing. Um, it can also just be a medical condition, but for me, in my case, swallowing being gross and nauseous for me is an eating disorder thing. My second tip, and this one actually worked a lot better for me than I was expecting, is ordering food. <laughs> Literally ordering Postmates, DoorDash, this is the only time I would encourage spending money on getting food delivered. And that is because something the professional that I saw was explaining is that part of an eating disorder is that your mind connects with food in a negative way. 
So something I learned is to get foods that you already know you like, and that way your brain already has a positive image or opinion of the food that you're trying to consume. So I would order like DoorDash or Postmates and order like my favorite stuff like snacks from Walgreens or McDonald's, like something easy and um, quick that I could eat but I knew I liked it, so it made it mentally a lot easier. The last thing I'll mention is taking your time. If you put on a show or call a friend or FaceTime someone, something like that, while you're trying to eat, it's easier if you've got a distraction and if you take your time, it won't hurt you mentally so much. That's my eating disorder story. I hope this helps some of you or, you know, makes it less shameful for those that have gone through what I've gone through or had similar experiences to this. Like and subscribe. I love y'all so, so much and I'll see you next week.